Uh, go grab them. We're going to start off with them in there. Grab communion on your way in. We're going to do communion right off the bat. We don't, we don't always do that, but sometimes I feel like the Lord says, this is how we're going to start today. All right, so I'm wearing this shirt today because... Felonies don't define the future. I was thinking last time, just praying the Lord, what are we doing? And when I got this shirt, we got we uh, we went to a, a summit on Friday. It was an all-day summit. It was recovery, uh, the Indiana recovery, and uh, they were giving away these shirts. And when I, as soon as I saw it, the Lord just struck me about how, as as we're people, we're humans. And how we fail, and we let people down, and we we don't um, we let God down sometimes. You know, we we let temptation take make the best of us. We uh, we let anger, we let uh, things that lead our decisions, our uh, our actions, our interactions, our relationships. And, and I was thinking about how um, you know, Lord and I were just talking about how it's hard. When you disappoint or you let someone down, and uh, and you feel like they're they're holding that against you, right? And um, I was and it just made me think about how how grateful I am uh, that my father doesn't hold every sin against me. He doesn't hold every disappointment against me. He doesn't hold things against me. He doesn't hold what my future has for me. He doesn't he doesn't hold it uh, from me. And so, before we even go into worship, I wanted us to take a moment to just examine our hearts. If there's anything that you need to make right, if there's any anyone that you have offended or you have looked disappointed, let down, and maybe it's a moment right now you just repent and you ask for forgiveness. Maybe someone has done something to you, and this would be a moment to be able to just forgive them. heart, would you just begin to thank the Lord for all of the moments that he has never held anything against you, that he doesn't hold your future at bay to what you have done, but instead says, I, I forget, I don't even remember it, it's done, it's over. you're ready to take the body give thanks that it was broken for you and in the same manner you take the cup give thanks for the blood that was shed for forgiveness eternal life. Yeah, Father, we just give you thanks right now. In fact, is what we do is we trade the sorrow, disappointment. We trade the past for joy this morning. So if you would, stand with me. Ready your hearts for worship. Begin to thank Him. We love you, Father. We're so grateful we get to come together to be the temple for the church, to be the body combined and united.
give thanks for the cross. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
close your eyes right now so you begin to just sing in the spirit. Just begin to sing in the spirit. If you have your prayer language, just start singing to the Lord. The worship team, I would ask you to just do it where you are right now. Just begin to sing to the Lord. Sing your song. Sing in the spirit. Press into heaven this morning. You know, I'm preaching about spiritual battles. They are ever present in the last few weeks. This morning is no different. So we need to declare the victory of the cross in our worship this morning. Let the song that's inside of your heart. Some of you are like, I don't, I don't know if I have a song. I'm, I'm so broken. I'm so tired. I'm so worn out. Right now is the moment to press into heaven. Right now is the moment to press in. I sense today that there's, there's grief in the heart. Let's press into that. Exchange that grief for the joy. not sure what to be singing, just begin to go down a list of the things that you're thankful for. Look around your house, look at your family, look at the things that God's delivered you from, look at the things that he's carried you through, look at his faithfulness moment after moment after moment, begin to thank you for that. We've got to press in, we're not ready, we're not ready. We're going to press in. We don't understand that bring pain. It's a beautiful song rising. It's a beautiful song rising out of this world.
this and I just don't know what that looks like. So this morning, just say, just as an act of my will, Jesus, I choose to surrender to you. Jesus, I surrender every part of my life. I don't know what that looks like, but I know that I can trust you and I don't need to be afraid. So I bind back any fear that might be in the room, any control of I, I have to fix it. I have to be in control. I have to, I have to, I have to. Jesus, this morning we choose to be a body that surrenders to you, Jesus. I declare in this place in the name of Jesus that we are a body that surrenders to you. We trust you. We trust you. We surrender this morning and we say we give you our whole life. So this morning just tell him, tell him that you surrender to him and ask him, what does that look like, Jesus? Where are areas that I'm not surrendering? So Jesus, we surrender. What do you want to do today? Have your way, Jesus.
Um, raise a hand. Who is feeling weary? I'm something. Weary. I should keep going. One, two. It doesn't matter. Look at that. Hey. All right. So I feel like the Lord wants to break that off. He, he told me, like, to pray weariness off. So um, whoever lifts their hand up, lift their hand up. It's okay. Now, y'all that aren't lifting your hands up, go around them and start praying. And I'm going to read Psalm 23 over us. Um, and pray over us. You know, we've heard it a million times. Thank you that you are our shepherd. We shall not want in your presence. You make us lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows in your presence. Father, you are the source of joy. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, I pray just break off the spirit of weariness. Fill us until our cup overflows. Let us rejoice in your presence. Let us take your word as truth. Let us abide here in your presence today. Let us put off all distractions, all hindrances. Lay it all at the feet of Jesus. Help us to pour out like oil before your feet. Father, I just lift up everyone that raised their hand today. I say, fill them. Remind them of the spirit that came when they accepted you. Remind them of their first love. Father, restore us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, worship team. Lights are going to come on up front here, so prepare your eyes. Ooh. Yeah, we have a couple quick announcements before we release the kids. July 9th and Saturday, July 16th, both starting at 6.30 at Nashville Christian Church. Um, there's going to be Brown County REC, the Residence Encountering Christ. It's a jail ministry. And one weekend is for the men and one weekend is for the women. And they go in and they feed the inmates. They love on them. They tell them about Jesus. And then we gather at the Christian Church and worship and um, and then we go stand outside the jail, and they don't know we're there. And so they we do a candlelight service with them, and we minister to um, the inmates. But they walk out, and Corey and I, we went one time, and we thought we were going to minister to them. But wow. So when they walked out, there wasn't a dry eye. It just, when they walked out, they felt loved. They felt worthy, cared for. Um, that that Jesus loved them and that, that the community loved them. And so that is July 9th and July 16th at the Christian Church at 6.30. And you meet there and then you go down to the jail and you're outside the fence and they bring them out. So And many, many inmates get saved that weekend and baptized. And so it's a very powerful ministry. So we'd love to have you join us for that. It is a powerful ministry. It definitely is. Sorry for the confusion on the kids. I was going to release them. 
we're doing something different. The kids are going to go out and go out that way. So we'll do that next week. A <laughs> little bit of confusion today. So we're doing things are different, you know. Thank you to uh, Bill and Bonnie for our curtains. So you don't have to look at yourself in the mirror anymore. Some of you are like, thank the Lord. All are great looking people, but it is nice to have a little extra space. Speakers are in a little bit different position. So sometimes when we make changes, it kind of throws the day off a little bit. People are like, whoa, what's going on? So um, the REC, um, you know, I, I want to speak to just briefly. Um, we, did, we had Mother's Day a few weeks ago, and, and today is Father's Day, and I just want to say that I, I think that holidays like this are hard. Um, you know, there are, there are people who have lost their father recently. There are, there are people who have lost their fathers a long time ago. And there's grief. I think, I think days like today are bittersweet. There's grief and there's joy. And, and so I, I just want to encourage you to remember that. So... You know, when, when we're celebrating, remember, you know, be mindful of where someone's at. And maybe they, they may just need to be encouraged um, as well. And I think a lot of times as a father, sometimes you feel like you fail your kids. You fail people around you a lot. And, and so sometimes it's met with a little bit. So just, uh, it's, it should, I want it to be a day of encouragement. So with that, at the end of the service, we have pies for the guys. <laughs> So I think it was, it was two. You can pick one of them. Yeah, you can get two. There's four different kinds, and um, and they look incredible. You didn't see them when you came in there. They look – I didn't taste them. I wanted to test them, uh, but I figured I should probably should not do that. But um, that's for the guys. Um, I guess we call it 18 and above. But you know what? If there's some left over, I know that you guys usually end up the, – the young people always end up with some. And so – and then afterwards – Hang around. I know a lot of you are in a big hurry to go golfing or something like that, but hang. <laughs> a couple of you are. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, but hang around because we are doing a water baptism after uh, service. I'm pretty excited. It's my mother, and so I get to baptize my mom on, on today. So I'm super stoked about that. Um, all right, all right. So anybody know what series we've been in? Does anybody remember? Battles. You, some of you said that weirdly. Battles. Stand and walk. Stand and walk. We've been talking about um, spiritual battles. So I'm going to test you a little bit. This is crowd participation. A couple of you are excited. A couple of you turned. You made, you made sure that you did not make eye contact with me. Uh, all right. Well, let's, let's read uh, scripture first. Ephesians 6. We're, uh, we're, we're looking at the armor of God. We're looking at the armor of God, but we haven't got to the armor yet. We're laying some, some foundation, some biblical foundation. Uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. We talked about that. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's a long sentence, because that's a lot of things. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. I like that. It doesn't tell you to put on bits and pieces or parts of it. Put on all of it. It's being very clear. Look, Paul's always very clear. I'm going to make sure you understand. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying all the Lord's, for all the Lord's people. I, I love that last one because, you know, I think sometimes we feel guilty to go into the Lord with requests. But scripture says, put all the armor on and then begin to pray in the spirit. Come to me with all of your requests. It's okay to request things of the Lord. 
It's important to know that that's a communication. So let's pray. Father, we just ask right now that you would move in your word. Father, that, that your word would bring life to us. It would bring transformation to us. It would bring correction and direction. Father, that it would be transforming to our mindsets and to our heart so that we could walk in the fullness of the purpose that you've called us to. Father, we commit right now our will to be attentive, our ears to hear. Father, that we would truly connect so that we can dwell and then go. Be different and grow. So, Father, we love you. We bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, crap participation. Let's see what you remember. First week, we talked about receive, receive strength. Some of you are kind of go back to your notes real quick. It's good. Anything stand out? Do you remember anything from that week? That's good. Listen, I want you to know, I'm the one that delivers the word. And half the time, most of the time, I'm like, Lord, what did I preach about? What did I say? Two weeks ago, receive strength. Two weeks ago, receive strength. Receive strength first. Absolutely. All right. Don't pray for a lighter load. Pray for more strength. Don't pray for a lighter load. Pray for more strength. I love that. It's awesome. Where does strength come from? From the Lord. Right? So you, you can't just do better. You can't just uh, try harder. When, when you feel like you can't try any harder, receiving that strength from the Lord. All right. Last week, last week was Battle of Words. Any, anybody remember anything from last week that stands out? The devil, right? That devil is the, it's the position. It's the title. It's what he does. He's a slanderer. Remember, he's talking about slander and how it's illegal. Words are illegal when you slander someone, you can be sued for it. And so when the devil slanders and, and tries to speak against you, it's illegal in the spirit. And so you can actually call it null and void and you can say that that's not true. That's not true of who I am in the, in the name of the Lord. All right, good. just wanted to recap that very briefly. Very, very briefly. So we're going to pick on verse 13 because I've said this multiple times, but I want to make sure that we truly establish before we go into the armor. So that when the day of evil comes. I've emphasized this multiple times. The key word when. Right? When. Not if. When. So let's define the day of days of evil. Let's, let's make a definition for this. So this is uh, my definition uh, based on everything that I've read. You go through commentary, you look at what people, how they look at, they break the words apart. And so this is, this is my definition. So here it is. The day when Satan uses a circumstance in your life to separate you from God, to discourage you, to tempt you, and distract you. It's like a day of concentrated evil, a heightened moment um, a heightened moment of warfare that would be the day I'm going to read it again when Satan uses circumstances in your life to separate you from God to discourage you to tempt you and distract you right and I say it that way because I, I do believe that in charismatic theology there, there is this mindset, these words get spoken, that if you just have enough faith, these things won't happen at all. Wrong. It's wrong. We don't know why they happen. We don't understand always what's going on. But the reality is, Paul is saying, listen, it's going to happen. And if it's going to happen, you need to be prepared. You've got to know how to battle. You've got to know, you can't just put on the armor, but you also have to understand what you're going to do with the armor. So we spent a lot of time on David, right? And David understood. He put on some armor, and it wasn't the right armor, and he quickly learned, I cannot battle in this. I've got to go put on the armor that God's called me to put on in order, for this, in order to be in this battle. 
Sometimes the day of evil just shows up at your door. Just shows up, right? I mean, I'm like, there's so many times where I'm like, man, I have faith, Lord. I love Jesus. And it just showed up. You know, it's like, I, I, there's nothing more that I could have done that I can think about. I'm praying into it. And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? Did, you know, is, is, did I miss something? And it's like, it's just the world you live in. It's just what is going on around you. And it just shows up. Right? And we're doing everything we know to do to kind of stop it. But the reality is, is it's going to come. So now you've got to know how to get through it. And we've been, we've been looking at that for a while. And I wrote it down this. When the devil knocks on the door, faith has to answer. Right? When fear, when discouragement knocks on the door, faith has to answer. When depression, when addiction... When struggles knock on the door, faith is what has to answer. I say it that way because a lot of times we will do things in our flesh. We're like, oh, I remember that one time I did this and it worked. It, it, I was able to make it through the storm. I was able to do this. And a lot of times we put processes and procedures into place. And the reality is faith is what has to answer the door. Because the day of evil is always looks different. It always comes across different. When it comes. Right? I was thinking about it. I've been thinking about this a lot. Obviously, I've been prepping. But thinking about, how about all these times? Like, you're trucking along in life. And all of a sudden, something just pops up in your life. And you're like, where did that come from? Like, I was delivered from that five years ago. I haven't thought about that. I haven't had those kinds of thoughts. I haven't walked down that path. And forever, and here I am. What in the world happened? And we begin to go down this spiral of like, what, what, what did I do? And the reality is, is that the devil is always trying to tempt. He's always trying to press in. He's always trying to trip you up. It's a nonstop battle. It's a nonstop. It just shows up. You say things like, why is my heart feeling this way? Why am we facing these things? And, and we'll, we'll talk to the Lord sometimes. Lord, man, I'm, I'm showing up to church every Sunday, Lord. Come on. I know I skipped a couple. But like that's, that's what the devil does, right? He's like, something happens. Well, you didn't go last Sunday. There it is. That's not true. Well, you didn't do this. I felt like I was supposed to do something. I didn't do it. And so I opened up the door. No, that's growth. We're working through growth. We're always working through growth. But let me say it this way. The day of evil. When the day of evil shows up. Key to that is it's not every day. It's not every day, right? You can't let the day of evil become a season. And I've been with some people. Where it is a season, everything has some kind of like big uh, spiritual impact. There's some new demon, some new principality that they're facing. And the reality is, is that sometimes things just happen. And we don't know what they are. And the, the Lord, what he's wanting to get us to is where we don't reel and we lose ground from it. But then we're actually able to go, I, I recognize what's going on. I see what's going on. Right? Don't let the day become a season. It's a day of evil. Uh, I wrote it down this way. In other words, it's coming, right? It's moving. It happens. You stand firm and it moves on. You got that, right? So we'll make sure we got that. It's coming. It's moving. It hits you. You stand firm. It moves on. A lot of times we get hit by something and we feel knocked backwards and we feel like we're caught up in it. And that standing firm is the ability to say, I know what it is. I recognize what it is. I'm standing firm against it. I'm going to pray into it. I'm going to battle against it. And I'm not going to move. I'm not going to be swayed. I'm not going to be moved from this position of moving forward. 
this is for you all, right? This is for us. This is so that when we approach things, we don't have to hang our head low and be like, I got a battle again. But instead it is that, you know what? I'm going to be victorious through this battle. Because I go from victory to victory to victory. It did knock me down. And some of you are going, but there's so many times it's knocked me down. Well, today moving forward, it's not going to knock you down. It's a choice. It's an understanding. It's how we walk in knowledge. It's how we walk in, 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 the, in the word. You can stern, stand firm. Right? Now, I'm not just talking about battles like... Um, well, let me say it this way. I'm talking about battles like temptation. Where when temptation comes knocking at the door, you backslide and give in to it. And with the mindset, well, I'll just, you know what? My flesh was weak and I'll just repent. I do believe that, the, that what Jesus did for us on the cross gives us the ability to say, I see the temptation, but I have the enough willpower to push through and move forward past it. And let it move on. I, do, I believe that that is the truth. I believe that's the truth of the cross. I believe that there have been times when we've watered it down to simple, I will just repent instead of standing firm and saying, I don't have to give in. Right. See, a lot of times when we talk about spiritual battles in the last couple of weeks, we, we we're looking at these things that happen to us and these things are out of our control and these, these uh, things that you know other people bring on to us or it's, it's just these various big things and the reality is temptation is this little thing that becomes a big thing and you can battle against it right you can battle against it so when it goes it comes it goes you remain strong right so you don't have to go through this process of feeling guilt and shame and, and, and repenting and Lord I'll never do it again and then when it happens and you give into it and you go I said I wouldn't do it and I, I just don't have the str- I just don't have the strength that I'm telling you when you put on the armor you can have the strength it doesn't mean temptation stops it just means that you're able to push through it I wrote down I, I'm tempted today but I'm going to stand firm I'm going to stand on the word I'm going to reach out for some prayer support I'm going to talk to some people to help Help me stand strong. Whatever I have to do to stand strong, to stand firm, I'm going to do it. Instead of I'll just give into it, get through it, and get on the other side and reestablish my relationship. What I'm not going to do is give in. What I'm not going to do is give in. Sometimes I think you have to say that to yourself. Temptation is at my door knocking. I will not give in. I'm, you got to speak to your... I submit my will to the Lord. I will not give in today. I know this is super popular. I know right now you're loving this. I get it. But I'm telling you. I believe that in Scripture tells us we have the strength to push forward. And it starts at the most simplest part of the battle, which is temptation. Last week, when I was talking about the slander, and I said, this is why we don't get involved in gossip, because you become the devil. Temptation. I was talking to someone yesterday, and, and they were we were discussing um, how sometimes people have a perception of us or, or they'll, they'll go talk to someone about something we've done. And I, and I told him, and he was concerned that maybe someone had come to me, and I said, I'm going to tell you right now, if someone comes to me with something about you, here's what I'm going to say first and foremost. One, I have a relationship with you. I know your character, and if it seems out of character, I'm going to say to them, that seems out of character. You should probably, there may be a miscommunication or misunderstanding. You should probably go to them first. Secondly is, and I'm not going to partake in gossip and talk about something and then you need to go to him. It's so simple and yet I'm guilty. We're all guilty. We get drug into this conversation 
And the Lord is like, he wants to separate us from those things. Because what happens when we get involved in it, we get drawn in. And as we get drawn in, we get separated. We get separated from what God is doing. You're like, yay, we're talking about sin and temptation. That's awesome. I'm just gonna, I just have to bring truth, right? I'm not going to give in. So you need to tell you. Can you just say to yourself, I'm not giving in. Okay, now next time you say that, when the temptation's knocking at the door, say it with a little more emphasis, a little more passion. Actually, say it like you believe it. Because I'm convinced right now, some of you said that, and you go, I've tried to say that before, and I gave in anyway. I believe tomorrow is going to be a new day where you get to walk, you get to get up in the morning and say, today I'm not giving in. I'm not giving in. I would say you could add to it. I'm not giving in because whatever it is that's going on, this too will pass. This will pass. It'll pass. See, I've got to lay this foundation before we get into the armor because a lot of times we put on the armor and we don't really understand how to battle. We can put it on. We can say the words. We can actually... You can, actually read scripture and say, all right, I, I put it, Lord, I'm putting this on and I'm putting this on. And be like, now what? And this is the first part of your armor is that mindset of going, temptation is going to knock on the door. Uh, day of evil is going to knock on the door. My faith is prepared to answer for me. Um, I think this is vital. This is vital for a church. This is vital for individuals. Because what happens is we get with people and something happens and the, the mindset, what we want to say is, man, that person is jacked up. And I need a way, I need out of here. I need to be, I just need to be out of here. And that's the main motive of the devil. The devil wants to make sure that first and foremost, if he can split the church and keep the church people separated and at odds and divided, then we are powerless as a church. We have no impact on community. And I'm not saying as a negative thing. I'm saying as a reality. Jesus wants to have impact, impact on the community and he needs people that are united in power and force to do so. And so as a church, we've got to make sure that we know how to stay united and together. Paul did not say, put on the full armor of God so that you will never experience this. Right? He didn't say, hey, put it on and there'll be a deflection. You'll never feel it. You'll never be impacted by it. He said, put it on because it's coming. It's coming. Be prepared. It's coming. And I think a lot of times we get so surprised when it happens. Right? I said that in the beginning, but I want to reemphasize. We, we actually, I feel like God sometimes is like, why are you surprised? I told you, it's in the word. It's coming. It's going to happen. But we reel and, and the, the faith says, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was possible. It's knocking on the door and it's knocking on the door now and I'm not giving in. Devil, you're not going to have your way in this one. The reason why it's so hard is because a lot of times it's in the little things. Right? When it's something big, you can kind of press into that and be like, we know what? This is going to take us a little time to pass this, but we'll get past this because things like this have happened before. It's the little things that we give in and then guilt and shame comes along with it. Man, I know better. I know better than that. Why did I do that? So, so the question changes to ourselves. It, does, it changes from, it doesn't say, why did it happen? or what, what brought this on? We go, we begin to say, I know better. Why did I give in? Well, you've got to start having that mindset that says, I won't give in. I won't. He said, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand through it. You need to be able to stand through it. All right? Uh, everybody say mountains. mountains. Why do we say mountains? Here's why we say mountains. Because there are moments when you will speak into a mountain and it'll move. 
And there are other moments where you have to climb the mountain. And you've got to know the difference. This is something I can speak into you right now, and it's going to move. And it's what, what that does is that builds your faith, right? It builds it build your testimony. It, it builds this mindset inside of you that goes, hey, I'm learning. I'm learning. I can speak into that thing, and it moved. And then the next time when you're drudging up the mountain, you can be like, you know, Lord, I don't understand why the last one could, I could just speak into it, but I'm climbing this mountain because you're with me. And I know that when I get through this mountain, I'm going to learn something and my faith increases. I get stronger and you're with me. You didn't say I'll see you on the other side. Good luck. You didn't say, hey, this is an easy trail to hike. Oh, this is the most dangerous trail to hike. It doesn't matter. We're hiking this together. But you've got to know the difference. You've got to understand the difference between them. I need to keep moving. Right? And I and this, uh, the beauty of a message like this is that no one really wants to hear it. <laughs> but it's true. Right? We don't want to hear it because it challenges us. That we have ownership in our relationship with Jesus. That we have responsibility to how we move forward. So no one wants to hear. Give us good little pretty messages. I have to. We're going to. We're going to cover truth. We're just going to cover truth, right? Paul is saying that you can be so full of the Word of God, the armor of God, the life of God, the Holy Spirit, so that when the moment comes, it doesn't shipwreck you in your faith. I have been in moments where where ministry is about to happen and. Uh, 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 Day of evil comes into the situation, and what happens? I'm sorry, I can't do ministry right now. My life is a mess. The day of evil just showed up. Now, I'm not saying that as a guilt. I'm not trying to, that's no shame or guilt. I'm saying that's the reality we live in. We get shipwrecked, and people need us to be able to say, I'm not shipwrecked because I didn't give in. Yeah, this is a season. It's going to pass. Yeah, it's something. It's big. It's a day of evil. But it's going to pass. But at the end of the day, God has given me the strength to not only climb up the mountain through it, but I'm going to minister to people as I go. You just keep moving and you recognize it for what it is. I'm in a battle. We're in a struggle. I'm under a spiritual attack, right? Right? And instead of putting your head in the sand and acting like it doesn't exist, you go, no, I, I, understand. I know what this is. And I'm moving forward and I'm actually going to confront it. Devil, you're lying. You're slandered right now. No, I'm coming against you. I'm going to speak against that. In the name of Jesus. And we begin to speak into things. Remember last week, battle of words? One of them's going to win. Who wins? The devil or you? You do. You have the strength of the Holy Spirit inside you. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Recognize it and you stand against it. Right? So, day of evil. I've been talking about temptation. Sometimes day of evil is a diagnosis. Where it shipwrecks us. For the future. And the Lord's like, Look, listen, I'm with you on this. This is going to be a mountain we're going to climb. But we're going to climb it. Temptation. A trial. Sometimes, I feel like I wrote down, it's just spiritual funk. Like sometimes it's just like, man, what is going on? I, don't, I just don't understand it. I'm, just, I'm, in a, I'm in a weird place. Or it could be the best season of your life that makes you forget you even need the Lord. I heard a mm back there. Do you know that it happens a lot? Man, things are just rainbows and unicorns right now. I'm, we're good. We're just trucking along. And we're not even like asking the Lord, hey, Lord, baby was coming. I should probably be prepping for it. It's like, everything's good. And the, and the devil goes, whoa, I got him right now. They're, they're in control of it. They think they got this. They're in their best season. It could be a lot of things. You just have to know that you can stand firm. Right? 
doesn't know how to stand firm. Christ is solid rock I stand. All the ground is shifting or sinking sand. I think sometimes you have to sing songs like that to yourself. Remind yourself, who am I standing on? What am I standing on? I'm not standing on my own power, on my own abilities. I'm not standing on my own giftings. I'm not standing on what I've created, what I've done. I'm standing on Christ. It's a solid foundation. See, I'm a human. I'll mess it up. Humans are all around me. They're going to mess things up. And I can't let their mess ups be the shifting sand that's underneath my feet. And I don't want to be the shifting sand under their feet. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stand on the Lord. You're going to stand on the Lord. We're going to stand on the Lord together and we're going to move forward. And, and when I and when we get into a position where it looks like you're standing on my shifting sand, I'm going to remind you, I'm going to need you to get off my sand. You need to get back on the rock. Because that will happen. That's what happens. We're human, right? And so I know I've been saying this. I've been, I think I, I feel like sometimes I repeat a lot of the same things. And I think for some of you, it's like, it feels like a broken record. But here's, here's my, here is my whole purpose, my whole point in all of this, right? I want consistency for you. That's it. I want consistency for you. Right? Consistency for you. And it comes from the Word, from the Holy Spirit, and from the mindset. Every season, I stand. Consistency is the key. All of you have different, you, you all have different things that you are interested in or, or have, uh, I don't want to call it a hobby, but you, you just have something that like piques your interest. Inconsistency in that thing is that you consistently do it over and over and over and over to where it becomes second nature to you. Where you don't have to think about it. See, if you have an interest in something and you didn't, and you're just like, only did it once a week, like come to church once a week. Right? You, you'd, have, you'd have some skill in it. You'd be kind of okay, but you wouldn't rise to the level you could. I mean, you can apply that to anything. You can apply it to anything. Consistency is what God's calling us to. And you find it in His Word, and you find it through the Holy Spirit in time with Him. Right? I wrote this down. The world is moving, culture is shifting, and the enemy is doing all that he can do. And when we, a church is consistently standing firm and moving forward, what happens is we have become the church of Jesus Christ that is strong. Strong, empowered, impactful, life-changing to our community, to those around you. To people you have, they're in your sphere of influence. Consistency brings strength, right? So the world's doing what it does, and we're strong, and we're consistent, and we stand. And we stand. And we stand. And we stand. And I say it that way because that's what's available to you in Jesus is the ability to stand. What Jesus did on the cross was so that when you have something, the day of evil come around, you can say, I have the strength and the ability to stand against this. I can press past it. When we're reading that, and when we dig into this, we get into that part where he says, so that you can stand then move. So what I've been spending, I've been spending the last three weeks talking about standing firm. Just getting us as a church to be able to stand firm. Getting you as an individual to stand firm. To recognize what the battle is and that it's not personal. It's not, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about what, who the character of the devil is. It's to recognize the difference, right? We will get into the armor. I promise we're going to get into the armor. Unless the Lord changes my mind and lays anything out. 
but I felt like I needed to lay a foundation, right? So if you've missed the last three weeks and you're kind of like, I don't know what we're talking about, um, you can go on our YouTube channel, go to our website, it'll take you to YouTube, and you can catch up. But we are going to get into it. We're going to get there, right? But here's, here's what I want to do right now. Um, here's what I want to do. We're gonna, I'm going to turn these lights off here in a second. Or I'll have someone turn the lights off. And um, I'm going to play a song for you. I want you to close your eyes just for a minute. I want to just talk to you for a second. I'm going to play this song. And during the song, um, you, can, you can sit, you can stand, whatever it is. I want, um, I want you to look at the screen. I want you to see the words. Uh, well, let me say it this way. If you want to close your eyes, you just want to listen. Some people are like like to listen with their eyes closed so they can really concentrate. If you feel like you need to read the words, there's words on the screen. The reality is this. Every single day is a moment in the morning to rise. The song's called Rise and Shine, and it's to rise and shine. It's to be able to say, we made it through the evening. We made it through the darkness. And you can apply that to the battles. As you make them through them, there's these moments where you go, I can rise. I can celebrate. And so turn off the lights. And
sorry. Uh, well, you know, sometimes you should play it all the way in the end. How about that? Hey, all right, so stand on your feet. Here's the thing. Why I played that song is, is I want you to know that in those moments when you're facing these battles and you feel the need to retreat, I would challenge that you would lift your eyes to Jesus, that you would say, you'd be able to say, you know what? I, I made it through the evening. This morning is a new day. It's a new day of joy. Joy is rising. I'm choosing to be a part of it. I'm going to partake in it. I'm not retreating. I'm moving forward. God is with me. I'm with God. We're taking ground. We're taking land. A lot of times we're in a battle. We don't even think like, oh, I just made it through the evening. We just like, well, it was a rough night of sleep. But you made it through the evening. It's a new day. You've got to find the joy. You've got to find the peace. We have a responsibility to find it. It doesn't always come to us. We have to find it. And it's a choice. And you only do that when you're standing firm. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you when things go, go the way we didn't think they were going to go. Silly things happen. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word that we can resist the day of evil. We can resist the, the thing that comes against us. And we can stand firm against it and it will move on. Father, we understand that the devil is always just fishing for a bait that we'll grab a hold of. And Father, I'm believing that we as individuals and as a church will become, become people who do not take the bait. We don't grab a hold of the lure. We don't get triggered. But we're able to stand firm. So, Father, grow us in this area. We're not asking for the days of evil, but we understand that they're going to come. And I don't want to be separated from you. I don't want to be distracted from you. I don't want to be distanced from you. I don't want to be in a broken relationship with you. Father, I want to be in the fullness with you. Father, we desire that. We'll do our part. Because you're always doing your part. So, Father, we bless you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to have a water baptism. But here's what we're going to do. Last time, we were doing cleanup. And we, we moved really quickly to the, uh, to the baptism. So a lot of you missed it. So we're going to clean up. We're going to get everything cleaned up. I'm going to let you guys get your pies. And... Um, and stuff like that, and, you know, maybe you're like, we're just going to go ahead and have that for lunch right now. And uh, and then once we're cleaned up, everything's put away, you know, a lot of hands make for quick work, so it goes very quickly. And um, we'll get cleaned up, and then we'll go do our water baptism. Cool? All right, blessings.